My name is Kate Ziemer. I'm the Vice Provost of Curricula at Northeastern University and a Professor of Chemical Engineering. And it's my privilege today to introduce to you Gord Winkle. He has 31 years of industrial experience, which started in the oil shale, oil, oil sands, sands yeah. oil sands of Alberta. And he is now uh, teaching at the University of Alberta. And he just gave, you just gave an inspiring talk <laughs> at our luncheon here at the spring meeting for the, the global conference in AICHE, and it was titled, if I get the title right, it was, was titled, Taking Safety to the Next Level, Making Risk Management Real, or something yeah, similar Almost had it. Almost had it. Making oh. safety real. There we go. Taking risk management to the next level. <laughs> yeah. So, so for those people who weren't fortunate enough to, to be at your presentation, what are some of the key messages you would like them to, to know? Well, first of all, you're very kind. <laughs> and it was a fun presentation to give. You know, making safety real really talks about taking what we know to be practices and procedures that we use to manage risk and ensuring that our intentions for those in terms of implementation at the field or frontline level is in fact realized. I think it's sobering to understand that in many of the case studies that we look at in safety and risk management, we find that despite those really good intentions, we have a gap between what was planned and what was actually executed and implemented at that frontline level. And when you think of that frontline level and how critical it is that those people are supported with the practices and procedures and the motivations to do the right thing under the right circumstances, it really then does become a challenge to make it real every time. So, we work hard on that, and during the presentation, we discuss, well, elements that help in that uh, quest. Elements like, well, a safety culture. If we don't have a safety culture, unfortunately, we really aren't going to make this happen on a sustainable basis. And in a safety culture, we discuss things like safety being a value, about learning from our organization and how it works proactively and not waiting for an incident to motivate that kind of learning and that kind of intervention as necessary to prevent incidents. As an educator, one of the things I've been very fortunate to work with AICHE together on is enabling undergraduate process safety education. Mm -hmm. And I am so thrilled to hear about the course at University of Alberta, Alberta, Alberta. University of Alberta, where um, every engineer that graduates is exposed to safety and risk management. Yes. And I, I know you're proud of that, and I want to emulate that. I would like to help encourage our schools to do that as well. Could you talk a little bit about how you made that happen and how people like me and others of my colleagues can follow in your footsteps? Well, we sure can. And first, let's make one minor adjustment. It's always a team effort. All right. And so, in order to make these kinds of changes, the first thing we have to do is we have to find heroes in every engineering department that frankly understand why safety and risk management is an imperative. And so we need those kinds of champions uh, because if you think about it, in the absence of safety and risk management education, our academics, the fine people that they are, are not really conversant with the imperative mm -hmm. for this education in responsibly supporting engineers to work with the sciences that we teach them. Mm -hmm. And so we've missed that crew, but think about now the future. As we move forward, what we talked to professors about was, if we catch this generation, they're going to go through grad school and become the future professors. This will be far less of a chore or a challenge for them. Uh, it'll be a change in our culture, in the very fabric of how we teach engineering in our university. And by the way, how can we not teach engineers that they're responsible and give them the tools to exercise that responsibility reliably? Uh, we do a great job teaching about the molecules. Now we just have to make sure they're set up for success to do it and safeguard society and themselves and their enterprises. Definitely. Yeah. So. How do you do it? First of all, you make, you basically confront what it is to be a professional engineer and you remind people of our obligation as a professional to society. Once we get through that, 
we then have this thing about, well, these curriculums are pretty full and how are we going to address this? Well, the way we address it is we do the same as in every decision in life. We have to make decisions about what's important and we have to then decide not to add more, but what in fact has to take a back seat to what really is a core competency in engineering. And that's why it takes heroes in every engineering department because those are hard decisions to make. But to the credit of those people at the University of Alberta, they have taken on that challenge. They understand why it's important, and they have adjusted their curriculums to make safety and risk management now a requirement for graduation. It's a great story. It is a great story, and one I hope we hear many more of in the future. So if there is something you could add to the talk you gave today but didn't have time, some message you would like to share, what would that be? I think the, the key thing uh, that I couldn't talk a lot about in the talk in terms of making safety real in the field is that we really do have to understand that engagement of the workforce and the employees is a necessary and critical condition for safety to be real. You know, there was a time in corporate history when we were taught that management and supervision was about planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. Mm -hmm. And I certainly uh, agree that there's a time and place for that in many situations. But there's also a time when we can step back from that and ask ourselves, how are we supporting people? When you think about what a leader does, the only value that they actually add, and it's a bit of a humbling definition, but I think it's very true. The only value a leader adds to an organization is supporting people so they can do their jobs better. I used to be in an operation that moved many, many tons a day. And I'm proud to say I never moved one ton of it myself. I didn't wire one motor. I didn't do one coupling alignment and be glad I didn't. I had people that were very good at that. But what they expected from me as a leader was that we would have a safe work environment, mm -hmm. that we would have the resources and the tools to do it right, that we took the time basically to set them up for success in everything that they did through providing a principle base, through providing a resource and a strategy that anticipated a future that was desired for us all. And you know what? If you do that, you start getting these wonderful things happening you start winning hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. We start a relationship that's now very different where we move from compliance to commitment. We have people staying in the moment and we have employees thinking and acting like owners. And when you get that, you know what? It's not only safety that improves, but so does production, cost, scheduling, good safety, good business, a win-win proposition for everyone. But that'll have to be another chat for another day. <laughs> well, Gord, it was a fit. Very pleasure talking to you. Well, thank you. Thank I appreciate you the much. opportunity. And what a great conference. Let's hope it continues to go well. It's really been a good experience.